So welcome everyone to today's webinar, How to Be a, a Successful Day Trader. And we're actually gonna cover more than just day trading. We'll also talk about swing trading. I should maybe have called this How to Be a Successful Active Trader because that's really what the focus will be for the presentation today. Let's uh, get right into it. Here's the overview of what we're gonna talk about today. The stock scores active trader approach, I'll explain what that is and the theory behind it. We'll go through the active trader strategies. There are four that we're gonna talk about today. I will show you the active trader tools, the process to find stocks. We'll sort of go step by step through some of the things that I do to find day trades, swing trades, that sort of thing. Talk about trading as a business, just to give you some things to think about if you wanna make trading a career. I will also talk about the education options and membership options we have at Stock Scores, the process to learn my strategies, the benefits of learning those strategies, and then how to join. All right, so let's get right into it. The Stock Scores Active Trader approach is really trying to find or get into hot stocks early. Every day there's those stocks that are just hot. And the problem is, when I say hot, I mean they're going up quickly or going down quickly. I don't really care whether they go up or down. Uh, up is a little better, I guess. Sometimes it can be challenging to short sell a stock. But um, the idea is really just to catch them before most people do and ride the, the trend. If you can get a stock that goes from a dollar to two dollars in a day and you catch it at a dollar ten, it's much better obviously than catching it at a dollar fifty. And so what I've done is created algorithms and and processes and tools utilizing computer power to beat the crowd to these stocks that are being bought aggressively by typically large investors who often will have some better information than most of us. And then eventually the crowd piles into these stocks and they can make really big moves. And that's what I want to do. I'm not buying these companies because I like what they do. I'm not buying them because I think they have good management. This is a very short term trade where we are just taking advantage of the fact that these stocks are moving and playing the probabilities and the expected value of those trades. So it all revolves around the stock scores action candle as most of my strategies do. If you were with me on the uh, Tuesday, was it Tuesday? No, Monday's webinar where we talked about the investor strategies. We talked about action candles then as well. An action candle is an indicator that I created which helps me to identify stocks that are trading abnormally. And what's useful about it is that I can program it into a computer, that's been done, and that allows me to hit a few buttons and keystrokes and have the computer go through the entire market looking for those action candles because stocks that do well tend to have action candles early in their upward trend. And I'll show you a couple examples in just a moment. Why don't we do that now? So this is the hottest stock of the week. This was a trade on Monday, which had an action candle right where I'm circling there. You can sort of barely see that there is a pink dot on that uh, candle. And I programmed the action candle indicator into TradeStation. And TradeStation will plot the action candle on any stock that I bring up. So I could punch in any symbol and it'll show me if there's any action candles on that stock. Now, most stocks, most days don't have any action candles, but some stocks like this one, for example, will have a number of them through the day. You can see that there was another one there and there was another one there. Looks like that's about it. Uh, but the one that's important is this one. It's the first one, and it's the one that came early in the day, and it telegraphed the move that ultimately saw this stock go from $1.40-ish to $3 a share, so better than a 100% gain. We'll talk more about this stock a little later on. That would be a day trade, uh, one of my typical day trade strategies called the day trader strategy, where I look for stocks making action candles from low price volatility. So if we move along, I can also do that on a longer term time frame. This chart, unlike the last one, the last chart was a two minute chart. This one is a 13 minute chart, and this is multiple days. So this is today, this is the yesterday, the 22nd, the 18th, the 17th, the 16th, and so on. And so each one of these candles represents 13 minutes of trading. You might be wondering why 13 minutes? Well, there are 30 13 minute bars in a day and I find it is a useful 
way to analyze stocks for that swing trade time frame where we're going to hold stocks for two days to two weeks typically. So this stock made an action candle right there on April 16th and that telegraphed what came two days later with this big jump that progressed over a couple of days. So the money that was moving into the stock there was doing so aggressively and it was likely caused by some investors that had some better information about this company. The expectation that those investors had was that good news was coming and they started accumulating the stock before it really started to move. But the computer catches them because the computer can read all of the trades that happen and look for those abnormal trading activities that I like to look for. And we've talked about this in many webinars in the past. I'm probably regurgitating a lot of the things that you've heard about, but it really is that simple, is if there's a crowd piling into a stock, there's a reason. And if we can be one of the first people in that crowd, one of the first traders to start accumulating that stock, we can benefit when the general public, which is the people up here buying, when the general public is buying, we ultimately will sell to them. So the group that's buying back here, those are, I'm going to call them the insiders. They're not necessarily insiders, but the people that know the company the best. And this is the public. And as a trader, I want to be in this group. I do not want to be in this group. I do not want to be part of the public. I want to sell to the public. I want to be part of the money that knows the most about this company and is jumping in earliest. And I don't know anything, I just follow those that do. So I've got uh, four strategies that I use for active trading. We'll go through them, I'll describe each one quickly. The stock scores day trader strategy is the one I use the most. You can use that strategy for the opening hour of the day or even the opening half an hour. For those of you that can't day trade all day, there is an opportunity to enter your positions in the opening half an hour and then, you know, maybe casually check them through the day. If you have access to a, a cell phone with market data on it, a lot of the brokers will provide a an application where you can watch the market and your stocks through the day. I, I use um, my phone to do that if I'm away from my screen. You can also run this strategy all day. It generates trades all day, but it generates most of the trades in the opening half an hour. And really the best trades come in the opening half an hour. We'll get into some of the performance numbers about that um, later on today. So as I said, most positions are in the opening hour and we can hold those till the end of the day. In some instances, there may be a reason to sell them earlier. Sometimes we take a loss early if the trade isn't working so that we only take a small loss, not a big one. And some days stocks go up so fast that we wanna lock in our profits early um, and that's a good problem to have, obviously, if a stock goes up huge and then starts to pull back, then we'd like to take those profits sooner than later. Always uh, with day trading, our positions are closed by the end of the day. And we're focusing on two minute action candles for this chart or for this strategy. So when we had our investor webinar on Monday and that is up on YouTube, you can watch that if you missed it. So in the investor webinar on Monday, I was looking at weekly or daily action candles. And so they're not as time sensitive. They, those plays take longer to play out. Um, day trades play out over the course of a few hours, typically, sometimes even faster. And we are looking at action candles on the two minute interval. And this, as I said, is really the core strategy for the active live or the active trader day trader approach. Now we have a, a service that I offer, I started offering in the last year called Active Live, which I'll talk about in more detail later, but just to give you a little heads up on what it's all about, Active Live allows me to show you my screen, my analytical screen, so that you can see the things that I'm seeing, the uh, signals that I base my trades on. And I'll talk about that in more detail later. All right, next strategy, stock scores, pullback plays. This is a really a way to add to a winning position from the day trader strategy. And so I'll go through an example of this in a moment. But for example, on that last stock that I showed you, MBRX, there was a number of opportunities to add to that position because the trade was working. And so if you have a trade that's working, why not put more into it? Well, you have to do that carefully so that you don't take on too much risk. And so the pullback play is a great way to do that. We add to our winners to what we, do what we call scaling into a trade. And so we'll have entries on that throughout the day, but
but on a relatively small number of stocks. So, you know, in a typical day, there might be three to five really strong stocks. And we just want to add to those when the opportunity arises. It allows us to focus on the stocks that are trending well, that really are working, where there's large investors accumulating the stock. And we're just going to ride their coattails as that trend moves higher. All right, strategy number three is the stock score superhero. Now, this for many years was my core strategy. It ceased to be my core strategy about four years ago, maybe five years ago. And the reason it stopped being my core strategy is because the market has become more competitive, faster moving. And now I really just use this as a way to add to my winners as opposed to initiate a position. So the day trader strategy now allows me to get in sooner. And then I use the superhero or the pullback play strategy to add to my positions so that I can increase the profitability of my winners. And again, I'm gonna walk through an example in just a moment of how that works. Now, the final active trader strategy is the stock scores simple swing strategy. So this is not a day trading strategy. This is one where we will hold the stock for a couple of days, maybe even a couple of weeks. And we're looking for this strategy. We are looking for action candles on the 13 minute or the 30 minute chart. Now in the active live service, I have some algorithms running that will show you every stock that makes an action candle every 13 minutes. So it runs a process and it finds all the stocks that are making action candles for 9.43 in the morning and then 9.56 and then 10.09, it does it every 13 minutes. And it will find the stocks that again are attracting buyers. And what we're trying to do is jump on the bandwagon early with stocks that are being bought aggressively by large investors that are trying to build a, a strong position. And because of computers and algorithms, we can find them before most people do. Now we can also use the stock scores market scan tool for this strategy, but we have to do it on the 30 minute interval because stock scores is not real time. And so because it's not real time, you have to be less time sensitive and that's why we will do this on the 30 minute interval. And again, I'll show you that process in just a minute. Most entries for this strategy come in the opening half an hour. So it's a great strategy for someone who can't watch the market all day very closely. Maybe they can trade for the opening half an hour or perhaps the opening hour, and they're gonna find 80% of the good trade setups from this strategy. So I have a lot of people that um, you do this before they go to work, for, particularly for those on the West Coast where the market opens at 6.30 in the morning or in mountain time zone at 7.30 in the morning, you can you know, buy a few stocks and then go to work or take your kids to school or whatever you do in the morning. And again, it's helpful to have your cell phone with a mobile trading app on it so that you can keep an eye on your positions. You can also use an iPad if you have a cellular connection on it. There's lots of apps out there where you can watch the market in real time from a phone or from, a, from an application on a uh, iPad or computer. But it's really intended for someone that can't watch the market that closely throughout the day. And so it's very popular with a lot of my stock scores members because it's less time sensitive and it works for people's schedule. All right, so let's walk through now a day trade. And what I wanna do is, uh, show you the actual strategies on this particular stock and when you would have your original entry and then subsequent entries. All right, so this was MBRX on Monday. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show it on Monday and I'm also gonna show it for today because it's a stock that I also traded today and it didn't work today. So I wanna show you contrast a winner with a loser and how the loser ended up being not that bad. All right, so anyway, this was Monday's trading action and our original signal was right, whoops, sorry. There we go. Our original signal was right here on the action candle. And so that's the first buy point. Now, what I like to do is once I've got a trade, I want to add to the position when I see a sign that that position is working. And I have some rules around that. Um, I only want to add to the position if the stock is profitable or if the trade is profitable. And so to add to it, you know, down here wouldn't, wouldn't work because the trade wasn't profitable yet. I also want to make sure that my new stop loss point is higher than my previous entry point. And so based on those concepts, I'll now show you all of the valid entries for this trade as it went up through the day. And then we'll talk a little bit about 
the uh, profitability of that trade in, in risk reward terms. So the next entry point was right here. This was a superhero. So I'll put a little SH there. So that happened uh, about 1140 or so, 1145. Then there was a pullback play right here. So that would add a third position in this trade. There was another pullback play right here. That would add a fourth position. Another one right here. That would add a fifth. Another one right here. That would add a sixth. Another one right here that would add a seventh. And another one right here that would add an eighth. And then this support zone was violated right there. So that would be our sell signal. So now let's go through the, the economics of it all. This original trade was exited up here. So that made a very nice reward for risk gain. Uh, I'm trying to calculate what it is. It looks like about, I'm not sure exactly. Let's call it 16 probably a little bit better than that, but we'll call it 16. Now the next one was right here, and that would have made a reward for risk of about 12. And then this one here would have made a reward for risk of 10. This one here would have made a reward for risk of uh, six. And then this one made I'm not getting this. Actually, the numbers are actually much better than I'm showing you. I'm kind of screwing this up, but it doesn't really matter. I just want to emphasize the idea, which is scaling into a position. So uh, this one would have made, let's call it three. Again, it's, I think it's a little better than that. And this one would have made zero on that last one. And this one would have lost one, minus one. So let's add that up. 16 plus 12 is 28 plus 10 is 38. Plus six is uh, 44, plus five is 49, plus three is 52, plus zero is 52, minus one is 51. That's 51. That is, I mean, that's an awesome trade. You don't get those very often. Now, if you had only bought the first trade, you would have made 16. By scaling into the position, you made 51. So the point here is that we want to add to our winners when the trade is working. And I, I have to tell you, not many trades work this well. This was a huge winner, but they do happen a couple times a month, probably. And when they happen, you got to press, you got to push, you got to make the biggest profit you can when the market is working in your favor. So that was on Monday. Now I'm going to show you the same stock today and what I did. So my original entry was right here. I had another entry right here. And I had another entry right here. And I sold all of them right there because the support, which is this little plus sign here, prior to my last entry was violated. All right, so that little plus sign is called an inflection point, something that I teach in my courses. And so when it broke down through that, I exited the position, I believe it was at 187, where I sold uh, this position at a loss, this position at basically break even, and this position at a profit. It netted out that I lost $27, which to me is basically a break even. And that was probably just commissions and that sort of thing. So the point is, when you're scaling into positions, you have to have good risk management because they're not all going to work. If I hadn't sold that there, if I had instead sold it down here, I might have lost, I don't know, $600. Not exactly sure, but something like that. And so by having the discipline to say, you know what, it's not working. We've built a falling top. The upward trend line has been broken and we're violating that support zone, it's not working. I got to get out, wash my hands of it, and move on to the next one. And that's a real important concept for day traders to understand. Uh, the best indicators in the world, the best strategies in the world will be useless if you don't have discipline, focus, and patience. And in this case, it required discipline to take that trade, which at one point was probably up $1,000 up here, and get out here for a you know $27 loss, but saving myself from the $600 loss. And that's a big part of what I, I stress in my courses and in my teaching with my students is you're not gonna be right all the time. Not every trade works. And so when it doesn't work, get out, move on to the next one. So how do we find these things? Well, I've got a few different tools. The best tool is one that we launched um, in the last year called Active Live. 
And essentially what this is, is you watching my screen as it runs my algorithms throughout the day. So every two minutes, I have a process that automatically runs and it grabs all of the gainers from the entire US stock market, runs them through the active can or the action candle indicator and shows you all of the current action candles for that two minute interval. And then it also does that every 13 minutes for the 13 minute interval for those who like to swing trade. I'm gonna show you the screen in just a moment. Now that requires that you subscribe to that service. You log on every morning. I have a little commentary at the start of the day telling you whether it should favor long or short. Today's comment was do long or short, but be somewhat selective because it wasn't clear which way the market was gonna to go today. And, um, and then you just monitor that screen and I talk my way through the, through the busy parts of the day, the first and last parts of the day. I'll highlight stocks that I think look good, maybe highlight some stocks that I think should be avoided. Just trying to provide my expertise and, and experience to help you focus in on the best trades. So that's Active Live. Now, Active Live is using TradeStation. TradeStation is a software platform that you can subscribe to, or if you are in the US, you can have a brokerage account with. I highly recommend it. It's been something I used for a very long time. But the problem with TradeStation is it's a little bit of a challenge to learn because it's such a sophisticated tool that I think for a lot of people who maybe aren't real computer savvy or, or really just wanna focus their effort on trading, they don't wanna use TradeStation. And so in that case, use Active Live. it's way easier. You're gonna watch my screen. I'm gonna to try to help you through the day, tell you what to do. But if you wanna do it on your own, I will send you my action candle indicators. If you are my active trader member of stock scores, I will send you the code that I have created, the indicators that I have created for TradeStation. So I think, you know, for most people, it's an either or. Either you watch Active Live or you run it yourself on TradeStation. Most of my Active Trader members are now using Active Live because it really is simpler and, and you can make more money with it because you're not having to run the processes to find trades. That's all being done automatically for you. And that way you can just focus in on evaluating the stocks that come up. Now for the simple swing strategy on the 30 minute interval, we also use the market scan tool. So let me first show you what the active live looks like. So this is the screen. I'll just show you the different windows in this screen. This window right here is my short side. So these are all the short candidates. Short sells are how you make money from the market going down. These are the longs, the buys. And then these are the swing trades. And at the time that I ran this or recorded this video, we hadn't run our swing trade scan yet. We run it, the first one we run at 9.43 and this video was captured at 9.33 a.m. Now I'm just gonna run this as a little video so you can see how it blinks and it basically is updating in real time. If you sort of pay attention, you'll see new stocks being added to the list or being taken off the list because it's real-time algorithm looking for stocks that are making action candles. And in fact, this was actually recorded on Monday. Whoops, I'm pretty sure anyway, because I just see MBRX coming up here. Did I record this? No, this was the week prior. Interesting that MBRX came up um, on the April 9th as well. Ultimately, it made its big move this past Monday. So it's a stock that's been catching some interest of late. So what you see here is the symbol the uh, time of the action candle, the entry price, the number of shares for $100 of risk. So the algorithm calculates that for you. And so if you're willing to take $100 of risk and you wanna buy Apple at you know, $200 or whatever, um, you would buy 90 shares. Now, some people prefer to trade the options because they don't wanna buy $290 stocks. So you can do that also. Um, or you can just shy away from the capital intensive stocks and that's the other thing that you see here is how much capital is required for $100 worth of risk. So AMRS might appeal to people with less capital because it only required $3,000 to take that $100 of risk. And actually it's even less because you divide that by three. So because you can leverage these things. So it actually only took about $1,000 of capital 
to take that trade for $100 of risk. And that trade actually ended up doing quite well that day. I think I had that as my trade of the week in the last Market Minutes video. If you want to go back and check that, I'm pretty sure that was my trade of the week. All right, so that's the active live screen. And like I said, we just let it run and do its thing and it's all automated so you can really focus in on the symbols and getting your orders filled. So the process is as follows. We look for action candles on either the two, 13 or 30 minute time frame. I'm gonna show you the market scan tool in a moment to how we would find the 30 minute time frame. We can do that with Active Live, that's the simplest. We can do that with TradeStation, that gives you some independence so you don't have to depend on me. But my feeling is if I ever get hit by a truck, then you can go to TradeStation. I'm, I'll give you my indicators. Um, any of my students can have access to those indicators. But Active Live has got some extra indicators and strategies that really help the automation work. And then finally, we use uh, stock scores to do that. Now, each day when we're day trading, we want to favor long or short based on the overall market direction. And we want to favor those stocks breaking from predictive chart patterns. So let me jump into the stock scores market scan tool just to show how I might look for 30 minute swing patterns. First thing I'm going to do is pull up any old stock. So let's pull up that MBRX. And I'm going to change this from a daily chart to a 30 minute chart. So I go into chart options and I'm going to go here to um, intraday. I'm going to make this, I don't know, 50, uh, let's go 10 days and 30 minute create chart. Uh, oops, something went wrong. Let me try that again. 30 minute, there we go, three zero. Okay, so now I've got 30 minute chart. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is run a market scan. So this is something you would do about half an hour after the market opens, not so much in the evening, but we run the uh, simple swing strategy. Where is it here? Simple, oh, it's an active scan. Stock scores, simple swing right there. And run this, again, you would do this half an hour after the market opens. And it found 63 stocks to look at. And then it's a process of going through those charts to see if it has the right kind of pattern. And so this stock, GSAT, had a good 30 minute action candle right there. Let me change the color of that. Right there, breaking from low volatility ascending triangle, entry price 47 and a half, close the day at 50 cents. Not bad, but that's day one. We've still got hopefully some more time on that. So let me move along. Now again, Stock scores isn't real time, so because it's not real time, you have to have a little bit longer time frame. You know, 13 minute doesn't really work on stock scores, but the 30 minute interval does. Here's one of the stocks that I traded today, AVGR, and there was the 30 minute action candle breaking a downward trend line, and it made a nice little move higher as well. So we'll just go through a couple more. I'll just see which ones I like. This one was pretty good. Notice how this stock, nobody cared about it. It was moving lower. And then right in here, it started to move up. Volume started to come in. That's the smart money buying the stock before the rest of the world knows about it. I'm not smart money. I just follow smart money. Buy that stock at 56, 57 cents. By the end of the day, it closed at 75 cents. You don't need fancy tools. Stock scores will do all this for you. All right, so that's how we would use stock scores for the simple swing strategy. Now let's talk about trading as a business. Trading is a very simple business. You know, you're really buying inventory and selling inventory. Buy some shares of Apple, sell some shares of Apple. You don't even have to put it in a bag for your customer to take it out the door. You're just buying and selling and it's got great liquidity. You can move in and out as quick as possible. And the thing that I love about it the most is that you can do it anywhere. I like to travel a lot and, uh, you know, as long as you've got a, a plug in the wall with an internet connection, you can trade. I've traded from coffee shops. I've traded from the beach. I've traded from, I've actually traded from my mountain bike on a mountain from my phone. You can make trades anywhere that you have an internet connection. And it gives you a lot of freedom because you can travel around. I had the, the pleasure for a year of traveling around. I lived in Maui for six months and then Whistler, British Columbia for six months. You know, you don't have a, a boss or a store where you have to go and or an office where you have to go, you can do it anywhere. I think you guys get the idea. You can do it all day. You can do it for an hour a day. You can do it for 15 minutes a week if you want, depending on the trading style you have. For the active trader, I think the minimum is an hour a day. And if you really want to make a career out of it, do it all day. 
Now I want to talk about the costs of setting up a trading business and compare it with the costs of setting up a small business. So my wife uh, owns a small business in the city where we live, and I won't go through the actual numbers, but I'll give you just the rough idea. So, you know, it costs about $100,000 to set up that business. And she pays about, I don't know, $4,000 a month for the rent for the storefront. And she has employee costs of about $20,000. And maybe not quite that much, 15,000. She has about, I think, 11 employees now. Maybe it's a little less. Um, I don't know what the numbers are. We'll just assume I'm making all this up. I just, but they're pretty close to what they would be. And then, you know, uh, product costs of maybe $5,000. And at the end of the month, maybe $40,000 in revenue, which nets on her $100,000 investment to start the business, it might net uh, like uh, 10 grand, 10% return for the month. Nice little small business, right? Now let's think about trading. Let's say you had $100,000 of capital, okay, to trade with. You're working from home. That doesn't really cost you much. Maybe a little bit of extra electricity. You need software and tools. So my software, like my active live service, that's $195 a month. That's the primary tool. You might want to subscribe to TradeStation as well. That's about $230 a month, a little bit more. It's $149 US dollars plus exchange fees. You probably need a computer, some screens. You know, you can maybe spend, I don't know, three grand on that stuff. Education. It's a good idea to learn how to do this. You can teach yourself. I taught myself. It took me eight years and cost me tens of thousands of dollars in mistakes. Or you can hire someone like me to teach you 3,500 bucks to teach you how to day trade. Technology, I guess that's the $3,000. So by comparison, you've got two businesses, one that makes a nice return on investment, another one that has, I would say, an even greater return on investment but with much less setup cost, you just have your capital, which you have to utilize to make your trades. At the end of the year, you look at all your trades, you hire an accountant to calculate your profit and loss, pay your taxes. It's a simple, simple business, one that you can do anywhere. Startup costs are low. You don't have to have $100,000 to start. In fact, I'm often asked, how much money do you need to start? I want my students to start with $0 of capital because the most important thing is to learn first. And once you've learned, once you've practiced, once you have some confidence, then start with a very low risk tolerance per trade, maybe $50 of risk per trade. To do $50 of risk per trade, you need probably $5,000. To do $100 of risk per trade, able to do three or four trades a day, you need $10,000 for $100 of risk. You wanna take $200 of risk? Well, guess what? You need probably a minimum of $20,000 of capital. Now. 20, just going through the economics here, if you have $10,000 of capital, that gives you for day trading $30,000 of buying power. Your broker will leverage you three to one. So that means, you know, if you buy some of those lower price stocks where the capital requirement is less than $5,000 for $100 of risk, you can buy five or six positions. And some days you'll be able to buy five or six, some days it'll only be one or two to trade. You might find one position that requires $10,000 of capital and three that require around $5,000. So it's a little bit of a juggling act to allocate your capital when you have less capital. If you're trading with a million dollars, you don't have that capital allocation issue so much. But even if you have a million dollars or $10 million of capital to trade with, I want everybody to start with zero risk practice and then go to $100 of risk perhaps make some money at that level, then go to $200 of risk, make some money at that level, then go to 300 and slowly move your risk tolerance higher and the amount of capital that you utilize because our number one goal in running this business is capital preservation, number one goal. And if you can't make money on paper, then you need more practice. You need to ask me as your teacher for help. Once you have success on paper, then start trading with a small amount of capital, but recognize that when you have money on the line, your emotions are gonna get involved and you might start to make some mistakes. So practice with a small amount of risk so that your mistakes don't cost you a lot. And so I teach this gradual process of increasing your risk 
because trading is so much about emotional control. You have to take care of your human side more than anything else. My rules are simple. I can write the rules for my strategy on a napkin. There's a lot of sophisticated tools behind them. There's a lot of uh, research behind them, but the actual rules, anyone can learn the rules in an hour. But applying the rules takes practice. You have to have good process. You have to have emotional control, discipline, patience, focus. Those are the human things that I can help you to do, but ultimately you have to do. And if you can't be disciplined, then you should have zero risk. And once you practice and you learn and you show that you're being disciplined and you're following the rules, now start to risk real capital. So that's a very important thing because I, a lot of people totally blow up trying to day trade. They don't get educated. They don't know what they're doing. They think it's easy and they go out and risk too much money and they learn hard lessons. I don't want that to happen to any of you. So let's talk a little bit about day trading performance. So my day trader strategy is fully algorithmic. What that means is that I can compile the results every day based on all the valid signals that happen for that day. I'm gonna show you the process that I use to do that and then I'll show you the performance. So we measure performance in reward for risk. So if I risk $100 and I make $200, I have earned a reward for risk of two. If I risk $100 and I lose $100, I have earned a reward for risk of minus one. Earlier, I showed that example of MBRX where, you know, the original entry made maybe a 16 RR gain, 16 times reward for risk. And if you scaled in, you might've made 50 times reward for risk. That means if you risked $100, then it ultimately made $5,000 in profit. Now the risk amount is not, much, not how much capital you're putting into the trade, it's how much risk you are taking based on your uh, limit of losses. And so we tend to limit our losses at three times risk. So if you risk $100, your maximum loss should be around 300. But you can make that tighter. It just lowers your probability of success a little bit. Now the charts I'm gonna show you, I call reward for risk charts, and they will show the performance of the strategy over a certain time period. I can show you the strategy's performance for today, I can show it to you for last month. I, I'm gonna show you actually since December, but I have compiled data since February of last year on my day trader strategy, and I'll show you how I do that. So we're gonna run into uh, TradeStation again, and we're gonna to go to a different window here. And so what I do every day at the end of the day is I run a process to find all of the valid trades. And the way that works is I run a scan, so I will run this scan right here. And it's just going through all of the US stock market and finding the stocks that meet the basic criteria. I then paste those in here and it will find the stocks that have action candles. I'm actually not gonna do it on this page. It'll take too long. I've set it up ahead of time on this page. So here are all of the valid buys for today. Here are all of the valid shorts for today. And these are the valid swings for today as well. Now that doesn't mean that I would take all of these because we have some other rules. Um, time of day is important. What the overall market is doing is important. Today was a day when I said, go long or short, but be selective and focus in on alpha stocks. And alpha stocks are those that have certain characteristics. They have abnormal activity from a low volatility chart pattern. Some days we'll buy anything because the market's moving up quickly. Yesterday would be a day like that when the market was um, it really had a big day to the upside. Today was not that kind of a day. It was actually a bit of a, a grinder day where we just more or less went sideways all day. So I can then take all of that data, I can copy it, and I can jump into a spreadsheet here, and I can paste it in here. So I have done this already. I did this just before we did this webinar for today. And so there you can see April 24th, this is the long area. So I also have a short tab, which I'll show you in a moment. And, um, these are all the trades. You can see the time. You can see the number of shares for the risk tolerance. In this case, I think I've got the risk tolerance set to $1,000. That's what it's set to there. I could change it to 100. It would adjust accordingly. It's got some indicators that we use. They're actually factored into the strategy. I just use it for data collection. And then I can see every trade that was valid for today. And there's a lot. Today, there was a couple hundred valid signals, although we wouldn't take all of them. 
because we have some other rules. This is just raw data at this point. All right, and I can do that for shorts as well. So you can see that there are you know, over 40,000 trades in this spreadsheet on the short side, and there's over 60,000 on the long side. So there's a ton of data here that I can then massage and mine and try to find the best combination of different indicators. So I can then go into this page, and this is where I can start messing around with time of day for entries. So what you can see here is that I've got my default time set to 9.30 till 10 for longs and 9.30 till 10 for shorts. What that means is I will only take the long signals between 9.30 and 10, and I only take the short signals between 9.30 and 10. And some days are long only, and some days are short only. And I can add that um, uh, element into the testing of the of the strategy. So now I can go into this chart here, which shows the reward for risk cumulative for all of the valid signals between 9.30 and 10, short or long for those days. And you can see that the line is going up from left to right. That's what we want. It's, you know, has times when it goes up really quickly. That was during the market correction in December because it's actually easiest to make money during a market correction as long as you're short selling. And then it had a little bit of a quiet period there, which was, um, I don't have dates here, it's just trade number. I think it was probably near the end of December. And then we've had a, no, it was probably more February actually, it was probably February. January was longs as the market bounced. And then we've had pretty consistent trading action in the last couple of months. Now, here's the cool thing. That's for trades between 9.30 and 10, which is, as I said earlier, the best time to enter your orders. I could, if I wanted, test it for a different time. I could say, well, what is it like between 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock? Just for longs. I'll keep the shorts between 9.30 and 10. If I do that, and there's a lot of data in here, so it'll just take a moment to calculate. I can then go back to my chart, and I can see that the line is still going up from left to right, but it's actually not as strong a line. It's not as steep to the upside. Maybe also not as much volatility, but not quite as, as strong in that regard. And so I can do lots of what-if analysis. What if I say I only want to take trades at the end of the day between, let's call it, 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock? And I'll do that just for longs again. Leave our shorts between 9.30 and 10. Go back over here. Well, look at that. Now the line doesn't look so good. It did really well in December. And the reason why is a lot of the stocks that were correcting would have their worst pummel lower at the end of the day, in that final hour of the day. And that's why in December when the market was correcting, we had a real profit in that final hour. But since the correction has been over, buying stocks in the final hour hasn't really worked great. We've essentially been breaking even. So this is a great resource that I have because I've got all this data that I've mined from TradeStation that I brought into my spreadsheet where I can start to massage things. And I can also do that by the day. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is all of the valid shorts for today. So if I just jump back over to this sheet and I go to the short tab and go here, you'll see all the symbols. These are all the valid shorts for today. And there wasn't that many of them, maybe 50. All right, I can then take those and actually chart the total reward for risk of all of those trades combined every two minutes. So if you look down here, these are the times of the day. And so at 9.34, we're there, and then this is at the end of the day at four o'clock. And so all of the shorts from the opening half an hour performed as follows. They went up to almost 40 RR, and then for a couple hours, we pulled back and went sideways. And then into the close, they started to do well again. By the end of the day, they had closed at about 70 RR. Now, if I wanted to see the actual trades, I can just hit the plus sign here. And there are the valid shorts from the opening half an hour, as well as their um, reward for risk. Now, this chart does not utilize stop losses. It doesn't utilize getting out of positions early if, if the trade warrants it, it's just very raw. And so when you see this chart, yes, it may be on a lot of trades and probably more trades than most people would take, but it also can be really improved upon by having a little bit better exit strategy because this just assumes that you exit at the close. 
All right, so that's when I talk about performance. I'm not talking about, you know, a good day that I had where I can say, hey, look, I made $20,000 today, hooray for me. I'm taking the data from every valid trade signal going back to February of last year to really measure that performance. And it's consistently profitable day after day after day. Is every day profitable? No. Almost every week is profitable. Not every week, but almost every week is profitable. I would say 90% of them have been. And the only thing that separates being able to do it from what the data is, is A, having the knowledge, which I can teach you, and B, having the discipline, focus, patience to put the knowledge to work. And those are essential elements. I can support you through that, but if you can't bring the discipline, do the hard work, have the focus, be patient for the trades to come along and not take trades that really don't meet the rules, then if you can do those things, you can succeed. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of an overview of the active approach. Step one is you gotta understand the theory and the strategy rules. I teach you that in the Stock Scores Education Center, which is an online resource where I can upload videos and different learning material. So I can go into the Education Center here and um, go down to the Active Trader section. You can watch all the strategies. If you have access to the Active Trader section, you also have access to the Investor section, and you have access to the Foundation section. Foundation is all theory. Investor is longer-term trading strategies, and Active Trader is short-term strategies. There is a written lesson, and there is a video for each. For Foundation lessons, we also have a assignment and a test. Take you probably three hours, maybe four hours to get through all the theory, and then you just focus in on the strategies that you want to do. So that's the education center. I also do live webinars. And so I'll be doing some live webinars to complement this training that's online. I will be doing those in May. And I only do those maybe twice a year. And so May 1st and 2nd, I will do a couple of overview webinars where I'll take you through the theory. And then I'm also gonna do some live market scanning webinars where we practice reading charts. And then the final way that I'll help you learn this is with a live class. So in May, on May 4th in Calgary, I'm going to do an eight-hour class at the University of Calgary. On May 11th, I will do an eight-hour class at Simon Fraser University downtown. And in that eight hours, we're not gonna focus a lot on theory because we'll have done that with the webinars the week prior. What we're gonna focus on is actually the step-by-step -step process to do this. Going into the little details, the little tricks that I have, the ways to be faster, how I evaluate stocks, how I focus my effort on the best opportunities, how I can increase the profitability of a trade that's working by scaling in, how to know when to sell and get out of a loser, and how to stick with a loser with that maybe still has some potential to turn around. All of those, you know, really the, the actual hard elements of trading, that's what we're gonna talk about in that class. So once you've got your education down and you wanna be an active trader, you can either watch Active Live or you can run TradeStation yourself. Active Live is easier, but I will give my students my action candle indicator and a few other indicators so that if they want to, they can run TradeStation themselves. As I said earlier though, that's how you had to do it a year ago. And I found too many of my students were, you know, not trading as well as they could be because they were worried about running TradeStation. And so I've automated that process. So now you can focus on just making the trades. You listen to my comments through the day. Every day I give you my, my market uh, outlook for the day, about five minutes before the open. And then I talk you through the opening half an hour, maybe even the opening hour, depending on how busy of a day it is. Today was a slow day, so I didn't talk as much. And then at the end of the day, in the final half an hour, I come on and I review the trades from the previous day. So as a learning exercise, and we also look for swing trades at the end of the day. So I go through some processes to try to find some of those longer term active trades, which we call swing trades. You can ask me questions either by email. If you're in active live, you can post a question to the chat or there's a question box. And ultimately you are, once you've learned, you're ready to start executing trades based on your risk tolerance. So what can I teach you? The rules for when to enter, when to exit. These rules are the culmination of 30 years of trading experience. We also think about how many shares to trade. You gotta manage risk effectively, 
And so some stocks you're going to buy far less than others because they are more volatile. How to minimize your losses so that if you're wrong, I was wrong on Adobe today, for example, I bought Adobe, ended up being wrong. You know, at a certain point, you just have to say I'm wrong and get out and take a small loss. But also how to maximize gains so that when you have that winner, start adding to the position using scaling techniques so that you can make that winner an even bigger winner. Step-by-step -step process to find trades is what I will show you. It's, it's like do this, then do this, then do this, then do this. And that's as, as specific as I can be. I'm trying to make it as simple as I can for people. How to use the stock scores tools. So the market scan tool, maybe using TradeStation if you want to go that route. And then how do you use Active Live? I'll also teach that to you as well. So starting May 1st, I've got my current round of education. It'll start off with you reviewing the lessons in the Education Center, then on May 1st and 2nd, watching the live webinars. You may wanna to come to the live class in Calgary or Vancouver. If you cannot come to Calgary or Vancouver, but you still want to participate in that live class, I am going to be recording them and you will be able to watch the video. I'll probably break it up into four or five videos so they're not so long. We're gonna have our live market scanning webinars May 6th, 7th, and 8th. You'll have exclusive access to my tools. Only investor and active trader members get access to my market scan tools. Only active trader members get access to my active live service and my trade station indicators. And through all that, you also get support from me. So the process, if you want to start learning how to be a trader using my approach, is you register for the course or which, whichever course you decide upon. Uh, you have to do that this week. The deadline is April 27th if you want some of the bonuses. I'll talk about that in a moment. Once you're registered, you get immediate access. It's all automated. So you go onto the Stock Scores website. Let me just show you where you do that. You go onto the Stock Scores website, go to Trader Training, learn how to trade. And right here, you can sign up for the course. You can watch a video that explains the Active Trader course. You can watch a video that explains the Investor course. Click on Order Active Trader. Go through the process. You'll be registered as soon as you're payment goes through, you have access to the education. So then you start reviewing that online material so that you can be prepared for when we have our overview class. That'll be an hour and a half on Wednesday night, an hour and a half on Thursday night, May 1st and 2nd. And I'm going to walk you through the theory. People procrastinate. I figured that out a long time ago. Uh, my students, like, well, everyone procrastinates. I do as well. So what this does is it forces you to walk through the education with me and I think you'll learn it quicker and better. And then the optional component is to come to the live class, Calgary, Saturday, May 4th, Vancouver, Sunday, I should say Saturday. I should have changed this. Keep doing this. This is Saturday, May 11th. And if you get, can't do it as the live class, you can do the video version as another option. And then you attend those live market scanning sessions that we're doing uh, May 6th to May 8th. And those are really the um, more for the investor strategies. So the benefits of all this, if you take the active trader course, you are then eligible for the active live service. I just don't think I can make trading any simpler than watching my screen and having me tell you what I'm seeing and what I'm doing. The algorithms, the automation, this is what gives us an edge. You won't find these tools anywhere else. I mean, there's probably quantitative hedge funds that are using stuff like this? Well, certainly there are, but they're not sharing it with the public. So my comments show you what is moving in real time. My algorithms show what's happening in real time. My support is going to help you build your skill with confidence and a lot less uncertainty. A lot of it is just not having the confidence to know whether you're doing it right. And when I'm there to hold your hand through the learning process, I can answer those questions and bring down that uncertainty, increase your confidence. Because membership is pretty exclusive, I don't um, teach a lot of people every year. I keep saying it's less than 100 people a year. It's probably more like less than 70 people a year. And so it's a small number of people that I teach. And that allows me to give very personalized service to those people. But also, it means that the opportunity isn't taken away. If I was teaching thousands of people my method, I don't think it would work as well. And ultimately, the education is there to save you time and money. It took me eight years to learn how to trade before I started really making good money. And then, you know, I turned $30,000 into half a million dollars in three months, but it took eight years to get to that point. And 
along the way, I paid a lot of expensive lessons. I guarantee you that if you try to figure out trading yourself, it will cost you far more than what my courses cost. So how do you join? You go to that stock, uh, that trader training area on the Stock Scores website. You sign up there. If you do so before Saturday, April 27th at 9 p.m., you get the overview classes and the market scanning webinars for free. If you want to register for the Focus Live class, once you have signed up for the Active Live or the Investor course, you're then eligible to sign up for Active Live. To do that, go to Upcoming Events. Go down the page to uh, uh, the Strategy Focus Live, sorry, and you can register right there. This is the Calgary one. This is the Vancouver one. And this is the video replay version. Pricing. Investor course, $2,495 Canadian. Active trader course, $3,495 Canadian. The active trader course includes the investor course. So if you want to do both, do the active trader course. You don't have to buy both. If you only, if you have no interest in being an active trader, then just do the investor course. You can upgrade, so you could take the investor course now and upgrade to the active later. That's $1,250. A lot of my students do that. They find out that they really enjoy it, that the education has been great, and then they upgrade. Now, the optional add-on is to come to the um, Focus Live class. It's $495 to do that. You have to already be, and you have to already have purchased this. So you do that first. Five minutes later, you can do this. If you bought the Active Trader course 10 years ago, you just have to do this to come to the live classes. If you can't come to the live class, it's a little bit less, $395. And I'm just going to record it as a video. You can watch that video as often as you want. If you come to the live class, you also get the video included. So to summarize, before I take some questions, <clears throat> active trading success requires an edge. And that's where my tools and strategies put you ahead of the crowd on these hot stocks. You're going to find them sooner than the masses. And that means we can be part of the inside group and ultimately sell to the public group. Because I provide personalized support, I can walk you through your path toward making trading a career. Even if your only aspiration is to do it as a part-time thing, it's nice to have someone with 30 years of experience to help you through that. And also 20 years of experience in teaching this stuff. You know, there's a bit of an art to teaching people how to trade and you have to keep it simple. You have to keep it very methodical and mechanical because I just find that my students learn it that much better that way. All right, so I'm going to put up a poll. If you would like to receive a follow-up email to today's presentation, just answer this poll accordingly. If you would not like a follow-up email, then just say no. I don't bug people if they say no. But if you do want a follow-up email, that'll probably come out tomorrow with, um, you know, again, just a little bit more detail about the course and that sort of thing. So I'll leave this up for a little bit longer, and then we'll take it down. And I've, you know, I've been building the list of people that want an update email since my webinar started a couple of weeks ago. I haven't sent it out yet, so I'll be sending that out tomorrow. So I'll leave this up for another 10 seconds. And then I will um, answer some questions. Okay, so let's take this down. Thanks for answering. Okay, so questions, and I have to read this off another machine here that I have beside me, so just give me a second. All right, so I live in the U.S. and will not be able to attend the live class. Oh, my thing just slid down. Hold on a second. Didn't get to read the whole question first. Um, will the live webinar provide the same educational material? So the uh, if you... If you buy the video version, you get the exact same thing. You just don't have the luxury of putting up your hand when you want to ask a question. You have to email me with your questions instead. But yes, it's it's just a video of my voice and my screen as I go through the day. And because it's going to be an eight-hour day, I plan to break it up into probably five different videos, one for each strategy that we cover. So you'll you'll get some links once I've compiled all that and built the um, the videos. All right, uh, question here. 
is this applicable to futures trading? I think you can use my methods to futures trading, but I find I, I used to trade futures. <clears throat> I found it a lot harder because I'm always looking for abnormal activity as my cue to take a trade. And in the stock market, there's, I don't know, 7,000 stocks to choose from. In the futures market, there's maybe a dozen actively traded futures, maybe 20, I don't know. Not, not, there's just not that many. And so it's harder to find the, um, the opportunity. Uh, next question. As a student of Active Trader course, can I have the codes and subscribe to Active Live as well? Yes, so if you are an Active Trader student, you can subscribe to Active Live. That's the prerequisite. You get one month for free, by the way, and you get my Trade Station indicators. You don't get all of the strategies that I use in Active Live. I've got some more sophisticated tools there, but you do get the Action Candle indicator and some other inflection point indicators and things like that that I use. Can you visually apply the day trading strategies without using the Active Live service or Trade Station? You can. I have some students who use you know, their real-time charting programs like TC2000. I think it's a little bit of the, you know, penny wise, pound foolish. You know, you might save yourself $100 by doing that, but you probably cost yourself potentially thousands by missing out on good trades. So, you know, when I was showing that, that um, trading as a business, what I was trying to demonstrate is you start any business, you have some overhead costs. If you own a store, you have your rent. Maybe it's four or $5,000 a month. You have staff costs. The overhead for a trading business is pretty low. You know, $195 a month for my active live service or $240 a month for TradeStation. That's nothing for, for the cost of running your business as a trader. On the MBRX example, you sold everything when the second scale and did not work. Is there a reason for this instead of scaling out? Um, so what I do is is uh, I keep moving my support prices up as the scale in is working. And if it stops working and with MBRX, first of all, it had a falling top, which is bad. It broke its upward trend line, which is bad. It was the, wasn't the second day of the run. It was the third day of the run, but it was kind of the, it wasn't the ideal day because the stock had already been hot on Monday. So there's just a lot of reasons there. I just dumped it all. Uh, another question. I have recently retired. I'm interested in doing trading, but have no previous experience and want to know if this is something that would be good to create some income supplement. Yeah, that's I, I, I don't want anyone to think that they need experience coming into this. People that have experience will already know the basics, but I teach the basics to those who don't. And the other thing is if you've been trading a long time, you probably have some bad habits that I have to try and fix if you're new to it. You don't have bad habits, but you don't know the basics yet. So you're going to expect to have to take a little more time to learn. And, um, you know, there's pros and cons to having experience and not having experience. Either way, as long as you're willing to put in the work, I, I can get you there. All right. So I'm not seeing any other questions, I don't think. So I think I will wrap it up. And again, I recorded today's presentation as a video. And once the video is compiled and uploaded to... Uh, YouTube, I will email out a link to everyone that was here today, and uh, you can watch it again if you missed it. Um, next question, how much time do the modules take to complete? I would give yourself three or four hours to go through the foundation, and then maybe 45 minutes for each strategy you want to do, and you really should only do one or two, so it just depends which strategies you want to do. but. Um, most people will go through the foundation material multiple times, certain components of it, so that um, you can really understand the points. Next question, how much RR should I expect to make on average as a day trader? That's a bit of a function of your capital. If you can only do two trades a day, then your, av or your total RR for the week is gonna be less than someone who can do 10 trades a day. I think for someone starting out, a good goal is to make 10 RR per week. And someone who's good at this should be able to make 30 to 50 per week. What is the subscription fee to Active Live? So your first month is free, and then it's 195 Canadian dollars per month. All right, so I'm not seeing any other questions, so I think I'll wrap it up there. If you do have a question, you can email me.
I will uh, put my email address there. There it is, TylerB at StockScores.com. Follow me on Twitter. Make sure you subscribe to the StockScores YouTube channel. Lots of good stuff being put up there on a weekly basis. And uh, I think uh, you will enjoy that. I'm going to wrap it up there. Hope you have a great rest of the evening. One more webinar, which is tomorrow, 7 o'clock, or no, 6 o'clock Pacific time. Tomorrow, 6 o'clock Pacific time, you can register in the upcoming events area of the StockScores website. And that'll be my last webinar for a little while as uh, I've been doing a lot lately and I think I need a break. Of course, we're going to start teaching this stuff uh, May 1st and 2nd. All right. Thanks for coming, everyone. And we'll talk to you next time.